Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your June 2019 Mid-Month General Readings. Thanks for joining us here today. Welcome to any newcomers and first timers and welcome back to followers and subscribers and thanks for taking the time to tune in and for sending in all your support, feedback and comments. Thanks to all of my clients out there too for keeping me so busy, both my regular clients and new clients. Uh, you guys keep me so busy with personal one-on-one -on -one readings. It's a pleasure. Thank you. If any of you are interested in setting up uh, a personal reading with me live or recorded, you can get more info and contact details by clicking on the description link below or clicking on the little about button that you'll find on my YouTube channel's homepage. I can usually respond to your initial inquiry with more information uh, the same day or the first 24 hours. And scheduling actual readings is pretty timely too. I do readings six days a week, full time. It's all that I do. So I'm pretty diligent at working with everyone's schedules and my own to set up readings as quickly as possible. So you can send me an email at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I'd be delighted to work with you. I do a wide variety of readings and all areas of life. So I look forward to hearing from you for those of you who are interested. So let's get right into this reading. This is for the fire sign of Aries, our Rams for the last half of June 2019. We're looking at the last couple of weeks of June. Let's see what's in store for our Aries. As many of you know, general readings always play out and resonate a little differently for everybody watching because everybody's so different, different things in your lives. So if you know your raising sign, moon sign, Venus sign, watch those videos as well because it can provide more pieces of what's going on in your life and additional clarification. Okay, Aries, let's see what's in store for you. Okay, Aries. <laughs> We begin with the sun. You know, Leo had this too a few readings ago. We begin with the sun <laughs> followed by the ace of wands. Spectacular. Next to that, we have the hierophant followed by temperance. Wow, you have three major arcana cards out of four already. Your overall energy or underlying energy from the bottom of the deck is the nine of swords. Why the stress, Aries? That's kind of interesting because you're the main your main cards are quite lovely uh, but there seems to be some undercurrent of, of stress anxiety worry fear fear about the future uh, maybe envisioning the worst possible outcome for something uh, the nine of swords is a card that speaks of fear anxiety maybe staying up late at night insomnia stressing over something circular thoughts kind of thinking about the same thing over and over again obsessively compulsively focusing on something uh, it's never a card I like seeing for anybody, but the positive aspect to the Nine of Swords is that it's somewhat illusionary. Swords is governed by the element of air, which in the tarot is representative of the energy that goes on up in our heads, mental, psychological, cerebral energy. So it's about what we think, our perspective, our perceptions, our belief systems and ideologies, because that affects the way that we see the world and relate and communicate to the world. So while the source of your stress, anxiety, and worry might be valid. This is a card that represents imagining the worst possible outcome for every scenario that hasn't even played out yet. You know, uh, making it worse in your head and it's not really that negative. It, it's not reflected in the reality of this. This is like a, a this is like a, a perfect, the Nine of Swords is like your mind being your own worst enemy. It's not like you're completely imagining whatever the source of your stress and anxiety is, but you're making it much worse in your head than it actually needs to be. But I feel like it's an undercurrent because I feel like there's other stuff going on in your active day-to-day -day life over these next couple of weeks that's kind of distracting. I feel like some of you are actually traveling. Uh, I feel like whatever is the source of the stress and anxiety, it's kind of it's kind of an undercurrent. And on top of that, there's other things going on in your day-to-day -day life. I feel like some of you are traveling here with the sun and the ace of wands or starting some brand new thing. I don't Traveling, I'm getting quite strongly for some of you. The sun usually represents illumination, fun, light, uh, uplifting of energies, feeling better, breathing a sigh of relief, uh, loosening up of any kind of restrictive energies, uh, maybe not completely banishing them. But when the sun comes out, it actually boosts all the energy in the positive the positive energy of surrounding cards it can lessen any challenging energy so the sun is actually going to 
in a positive way lessen you know whatever the impact of this is and kind of distract you as well I feel like some of you are actually traveling here uh, what clarifies and accompanies the Sun is the ace of wands so you have fire energy here which is the element which governs wands exciting creative assertive aggressive creative artistic action oriented energy aces are the number one the start of something new this is literally the spark that can be fanned into a big fire if it's carefully cultivated so a brand new beginning that's very exciting to you I, I, again I'm getting travel quite strongly for a lot of you some of you may be starting a tremendous wonderful new project that you're really exciting about you, you may have found a new relationship of some kind uh, and again, even though there's this Nine of Swords energy, I feel like this is more related to what your day is actually feeling like. Some of you may be going on vacation, traveling, going on vacation. Um, I feel like some of you may be traveling quite a ways to be with your family or go back to the place you came from, uh, which is kind of making you feel better and making you feel a bit more stable and grounded, which is going to help whatever the source of this nine of swords is because again i feel like it's an undercurrent it's a very real thing and it it feels like you're you're thinking about it a lot maybe particularly at night when you're laying in bed or when you get up first thing in the morning or when you have those quiet times but in between there there's a lot going on which is i guess in a way kind of helping distract you uh from you know whatever this is that i think is still playing out we have the hierophant and temperance the Hierophant is a card about the tried and true, the establishment, the conventional path, convention, tradition, taking something to another deeper level, marriage, uh, established religions, corporations. It can even represent family, roots of origin, where you come from, the things that make us feel grounded and safe and conventional, walking the same path that a million other people have walked before us because that's just how they do it. Uh, and we get that kind of security that comes from being under that umbrella, even if we have to uh, maybe sometimes sacrifice a little individuality or self-expression. Now, the Hierophant is accompanied by Temperance, which is a card about moderation and keeping your balance or constantly shifting to kind of keeping your balance, being grounded, being stable. Accompanying the Hierophant, I, I really feel like... I, I really feel like there's some kind of source of underlying instability in your life right now, Aries. I feel actually for a lot of you like it's been going on for some time. And you may not have been, don't shoot the messenger here, but I feel like some of you may not have been. I feel like one of the reasons it's still there is because some of you, not all of you, but some of you may have a tendency to shove things under the carpet or if it can't get fixed immediately or easily you maybe just go on and pretend it's not happening or hope that it'll fix itself or something of that sort um, not all of you of course it couldn't apply to everybody who's watching but for some of you and, and because it feels like this has some history behind it whatever this is that you're concerned about it has to do I feel like it's been going on for a while but it has to do with how things are going to play out but I feel like some of you just may be the, the last half of June I feel like you're going to be distracted in a way uh, maybe that's going to be positive for you as well and help give you a, more of a sense of stability I feel like a lot of you are going to be traveling but I feel like where it is you're traveling or who you're traveling to is family or some place that you have a history with because when you get there it makes you feel more stable it makes you feel more rude it. For some of you, you're going to be starting a new project, uh, maybe a new job. You're getting involved in something new that, I mean, the sun and the ace of wands, this is spectacular energy. This is exciting, diverting, distracting. It automatically feels like an uplifting of energy. It makes you feel better. And it's something that makes you feel very rooted and stable and secure. I also feel like for those of you who are traveling to another state or another country, you may have family or friends there, but I also feel like you're starting a new project there. Maybe you're fixing a place up or, you know, getting involved in some other stuff there too. Again, this is all kind of distracting and in a way kind of helping stabilize you from this underlying concern of stress about something that's going on. But caution areas for those of you who have a tendency to be conflict avoidant and just want something to get fixed on its own or pretend it doesn't exist there's only so much of that we can do because it's still there and it needs to be dealt with um, 
but the last half of June looks really quite lovely and full of different things for you so that this is just an undercurrent and not quite so I, I don't think it's going to be something that's in your face uh, as much as it's just kind of maybe in those quiet times let's pull out some clarifying cards for what this nine of swords is about I kind of feel like for some of you there's like you you have two there's two different distinctly two distinctly different portions of your life not that you're living two lives in terms of being deceptive but that you have a, a life and a routine in one place and a life and a routine in another place and it's trying to maintain some kind of sense of balance there and maybe trying to figure out what place you really belong in and in doing that are you going to be able to take everything or everyone with you that you want to if you decide to make a change maybe you're living between two different states or two different countries and it's getting to the point where you need to maybe make a decision as to where you're going to be permanently or where you're going to be much of the time and who does that affect it's very specific isn't it for somebody all right nine of swords what's this about seven of pentacles reflection contemplation over what you have what you want to do with what you have how much you have invested in something uh, it could be how much you have invested in a job how much you have invested in a home in an area in a company a business in a relationship uh, I've put a lot of effort into getting it to this point can I take it further what do I do with it do I take what I can and leave do I keep growing the same thing can I make it better you know reflection and contemplation over something that you already have a lot of time and effort into and what to do with it uh, the three of Pentacles partnership teamwork collaboration so reflection and contemplation over what to do with some kind of situation relationship or partnership could even be a business or a big project that you've had a lot you've invested a lot into whether it's just a work project or a business or company or a relationship or maybe a combination of all of those what do I do about this this is where it's at this is what how much effort and time I have put into it what do I do with it where do I take this and the two of wands which is where do I take this do I go this way or do I go this way so what it is of course in a general reading is going to vary and I think that's I mean that's what this underlying kind of stress and anxiety is about although it's it's lessened it, it's not as it probably doesn't feel like the nine of swords except maybe late at night or early in the morning because I feel like there's a lot going on for you this next couple of weeks Aries that's kind of removing it a little bit further away but again for those of you who have a tendency to kind of ignore things that need to be taken care of this does need to be taken care of you do need to decide where you're going to be if you're going to decide that you want to be in one place over another that you've been kind of going back in or if you 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 can't cut off either thing or either place or either life I think it's about where you're putting the majority of your time and energy and if that's the case then how does that affect who or what you're going to be away from the most and and is that fixable um, I think for some of you this might be about where to take a relationship that you have a lot invested in um, it feels like you're you're making a move with your life and perhaps what do you do about this relationship if you're thinking of relocating or moving or spending the majority of your time in another place and you have a relationship in the place that you're spending less time in how does that work how's that going to work for the relationship or the partnership or the work or the business can you juggle both uh, will they leave uh, should you get married and just kind of make the great big huge leap uh, it, it's this energy that's kind of underlying it but it's I think over these next couple of weeks you're going to be well distracted by travel by some new things that are going on and that you're building as well so I think more will be revealed as the situation continues Aries but the next couple of weeks uh, looks quite good for you um, lots of stuff to lots of new exciting building kind of stuff so I hope I just didn't say Leo your, your re reading is uh, remarkably somewhat actually maybe um, it feels a bit similar to Leo but then the two of you are fire signs even though I've done a few in between you and Leo uh, so Aries this pretty much wraps up your June 2019 mid-month reading I hope that you found it helpful and <laughs> hopefully not too confusing uh, 
I will see you all again in a couple of weeks for the July 2019 general readings. Doesn't it seem like this year is passing so quickly? And again, those of you who are interested in scheduling a personal reading with me, particularly if any of these videos resonate for you, please feel free to email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I'd be delighted to work with you. I do love and romance readings, uh, relationship compatibility charting, career work and finance, investment readings, gift readings. I do six and 12 month overviews as well, which, uh, are very specifically designed spreads which take a look at all the main areas of your life over the next six or 12 months depending on how far ahead you want to look uh, which a lot of people find helpful uh, and I do a wide variety of, of just general readings with people where we can discuss anything you want to from time frames from 15 minutes all the way up to an hour and a half so there's a few things to consider I look forward to hearing from those of you who are interested. So I'll see you all in a couple of weeks, Aries. Take care. And as always, I wish you joy, peace, blessings, and a very happy life. And I hope to see you back here again soon. Bye-bye.